Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Now, I don't often get caught up in a little cult of fishing, but there's one style of fishing, a technique that I seem to have got a bit of a bug for. It's fly fish of a car. Now, I've done fly fish of a car for, well, 30 years ago, but now there is definitely a cult following of specialists, a bit like it's getting drop shotting for perch, or we say something like that. I can see it, I can feel it coming. There's gonna be a big boom in fly fishing for carp. It's great sport, you can travel light. Let's get down the lakes and see if we can hook some, show you what it's all about. Right, one thing I have done, I guess it's a fishery where people obviously want a bit of peace and quiet as well, is I've taken the ratchet out from the centre of the flywheel, which I do a lot when I'm stalking big rainbow trout, or indeed any big trout. Most reels have got a little spring or a catch on the centre spindle that locks it there. So what you do is squeeze it, pop the spool off, just like changing a spool, and in here you've got, I can't speak for all reels, I can only speak for the ones I use, you've got those two triangulated cogs which actually run against the outside of the wheel there and give you your ratchet like this. But obviously, that can get pretty trying. It's great when a fish is screaming out, it's a bit monotonous when you have to wind it all the way back in. So, just because other people fishing it on a bit of peace and quiet, I've actually gone into stealth mode, made it quiet, and I just knocked those two off. As you can see there, like that, Got a little slot there as well to put the fly line in so you don't pinch the fly line in the real rim and spool edge and then when i strip out to cast or indeed i wind in totally silent stealth mode the beauty of fly fish of a carp is that you can pick that fly up off the water and drop it down very very quietly and relatively quickly so you don't disturb the fish You've got to watch your back cast because a lot of carp fisheries, especially commercial ones, they're not cleared for back casting, so you're going to have snags behind you. So just be aware when you're casting, look around your surroundings before you drop that fly out in the water. Oh, guys, I've got a big fish on here. I lost one in the bushes earlier on. This one's got me down to the back in like whole fly lines out there. I'm guessing it's a really good fish. Yep. Well, the downside I've got is this fish might kite into the left and go in the same bushes I lost the early one in. So I'm going to go around this way and try and pull her. Bit of an angle on it if I can, if I can get him to turn. <laughs> you can get an absolutely incredible fight when you're using a fly rod. They are, well, not that most, they're not really a powerful rod, you know, but if you keep that rod blade fairly low, your increase of power a lot more than you would if you have the tip high. And of course, when those carp get digging in close, that's when you might bust your very favorite fly rod. So you what guys, this fish goes, this is going well. I think the best thing when you come here, if you're using a fly rod, get two tickets, because you might need an overnight one. <laughs> get two tickets? I think the way this one's scrapping, I'm gonna need a week's permit there. Luckily, the fishery owner, Nick, is on hand to help me out and try and get this fish in because it was going like a bat out of hell. This is why I love fly fishing for carp. Yeah, that's a lovely fish. It's going to be 10 or 12, 10 or 12? Yeah, 10 I reckon. You can't do any better than that in a fly rod I don't think, but they've had some gargantuan fish here. And we're going to hear about those in a minute. Let's get this one back. Well, it's a pretty epic fight, guys. I consider myself a little bit fortunate to get it in away from those snags. But they get way, way bigger that than that one there on a fly or two. 
exactly how big do they grow? I'm Nick from Vale Farm Fisheries. We've been fly fishing for carp for quite a few years here. We're gradually getting people more and more interested. It's a different way of fishing, but it's all good fun. We've got three lakes here, which you can fish for. Have to intermingle with the normal course fishers, so you just have to be a bit careful on back cast, but we've got plenty of clear back space on most of the lakes. Each of the lakes have big fish. Uh, the biggest one out of the middle lake so far has been 33.07 this year. The biggest out on a fly rod has been over 30 pounds. So they're you know, doing well on every lake so far. We've been open now, this is our 17th open season. Uh, we dug the lakes quite a few years ago, or 18 years ago, and wanted to get a good coarse fishery set up, which we think we've done now. So there's all types of fishing here. We can work with most people uh, for various things such as we've got carp, tench, rudd, bream and perch. So it covers quite a spectrum and we're still learning about fly fishing. We've got the carp and the rudd are good fun but the bream come off the top as well. So all different aspects of the fly fishing sport. With our three lakes they vary in depth. The old trout lake here which we're fishing on at the moment uh, is about eight feet deep right the way across. They're all about acre and a half size. Middle Lake, which is uh, the Donut Lake, uh, it varies from 14 feet to shallower on some sort of places. And then Beehive Lake, the other one starts at 12 feet as you walk in, shallows down to about eight feet deep. We're a dawn till dusk day ticket fishery, but we do do some overnights, but it's all pre-book uh, and phone up a few days before. But you've got to have fished here a few times before, so we know who you are and make it nice and safe for everyone. We're fairly minimal on regulations. Most stuff works as long as it's barbless hooks. You do need unhooking mats and a decent net. Make sure you look after my fish and then you come back and catch them again. Juniors are always welcome, but you do need a, a responsible adult to accompany them. So, and most of the baits work here. Pellet especially works well. They're well used to it. We feed them on it. We do also sell that pellet. Bread floats well. Luncheon meat, sweet corn always works. Winter baits, of course, maggots, which will always catch a lot of so uh, silver fish. Uh, we don't want kilos of boilies tipped in, so we don't mind one as a hook bait, but that's all. We don't allow keep nets. We want all our fish kept pristine, so you know, catch them, treat them gently, and put them back in fairly quick. We have perch to just about four pound in all three lakes. Best sort of bait seems to be chopped worm in under bushes. Car parks not too far from the lakes at all. Easy walking distance. There's a loo in the car park as well. Ladies seem to find it quite nice to come over and sit with husbands and sometimes take up fishing. We're gradually getting more and more ex-trout people fly fishing for carp. Completely different and something fun to try. Oh guys, this is something of a first. It's not a carp. Wait for this. Dry fly on the top, a hedgehog fly. He looks like a bream. Maybe it's just a bream, but I think you tell us, guys. Just doesn't quite look deep enough for bream. But off the top, weird. Well guys, I've come up to the other lake, <clears throat> at the top here. Put the ratchet back on for you. And another carp on. I don't think it's as big as the last one, but hey ho, a fish is a fish. Which is why so many people so many people are now trying carp on the fly. Basically, they pull a trout inside out. And one tip I would say, 
keep your rod low, you'll get more compression into the blank itself and have less chance of breaking your rod. If you bring it back at an acute angle, if it suddenly lunges, because it's different to a trowel, could snap that tip about a third of the way down. Try and keep your rod low if you do want to put power on. So make sure you take an extending pole so you net the fish a little bit further out and you just keep a natural progressive arc into the rod rather than an acute one. Long handle, it's not short handle for carp on fly. Now to get them going initially, I'll take loads of biscuits and spray them all around as far as I can. Nooks, crannies, underbushes, near weed beds, lilies, rushes, reeds, anywhere you think it's a feature, even in the open water. But once you start to get some taking fish coming up, you want to throw them just in little groups of six or eight and try and throw them in a tight circle. Don't spray them out, throw them so that you've got a target and that will keep the fish confined in one area, going around and around, mopping up freebies and that gives you something to target your fly and drop it into. If you just cast it out willy-nilly, the chances of getting a take are way down. If you cast it into a bunch of these guys, pretty good chance you will get a take. Now just watch as the fly lands on the surface You'd be hard pushed at this distance to see which one is a biscuit floating there and which one is actually the fly. But if I zoom in here, you can see, there you are, is all the deer hair which makes that buoyancy of the fly and keeps it floating on the surface. I mean, if there's anything I could do, it would probably, well, maybe make a fly with the hook pointing upwards and it would be even more deadly than it is now. Well, people, that's how close I came to getting that fish a scale on the hook. It just came up and crashed the fly, took me by surprise, and that's all I've got to show for it. Close, but no cigar. Music to the ears, guys. It's like people I wanted to see it, now I don't want to see it. I'm frightened of it. The net's the other side of the snag, and he's going to the snag. He's still here, guys. He is still here, and still digging for that bush. Tell you what, rather than pose around for the camera, I'm going to get this one first car, uh, first net if I can. The fish come back on the feed out there as well. Oh, no. oh that's a nice fish. Fish, guys. Eight, nine, six, maybe. Might go ten. Nearly in duck shit. Lovely. Get on there and check it out. 
very, very close to 10. Over there, guys, is our resident bailiff. I'll just zoom in. Hey, you can see he's got one of several carp on the fly rod as well. He's down the other end of the lake. There he is. And eight and a half pounds of fighting common carp on a fly rod is not to be sniffed at. That is a cracking fish. Cool. On this. And of course, the other thing that I love about fly fishing is, well, you don't need any tackle. You don't need to go around with a wheelbarrow full of about 80 pounds worth of weight and equipment of boilies of, who knows, bed chairs, bivvies, you don't need any of that. You need a net, an unhooking mat, pocket full of flies. Wow, it doesn't get any more basic. And of course, because I'm moving around all the time, that access to all different parts of the lake, you can stumble across places that you never even thought carp were there. It's great sport. I really suggest you give it a go. Another totally awesome tip is, if you're just starting fly fishing, you haven't done it for a while, and your tackle's been in the garage or in the tackle shed, it's gonna have, this line will have a line memory on it. That means it retains the memory around here of the spool. If you cast out, this is for, true for trout, as any fly fishing really. If you cast out, you're going to get little coils of sort of like a clock spring going across the top of the surface. And that's no good because if you add about one inch to straighten those coils out, you've got 50 or 60 of them on one long cast. That's probably three feet to lift off before you even make contact to set the hook. So try and get that memory out of it, peel some line off, and just gently stretch it like this and try and get rid of those memory coils just slowly don't snap the line and then it should lay nice and straight another tip if you're casting into the wind which i'm going to be doing today a bit of a breeze it's going to constantly push the fly towards you that in turn is going to give you a slack like this so just slowly figure of eight take up that slack don't move the the fly the chum mixer biscuit you know because that's going to spook the carp just keep pace with that drift if you can and you should be able to set the hook okay